Okay, in this reaction, we're going to talk about the mechanism of a Friedel-Crafts alkylation, and here we have a rearrangement. So we want to go through this mechanism and um, to really understand the rearrangement that occurs. So if we look, we can tell we have a rearrangement because here's carbons A, B, and C, but instead of having my aromatic ring connected to carbon A, it is in fact connected to carbon B. So here's A, B, C. So from the Friedel-Crafts alkylation reaction, we know we normally form a new bond to the carbon atom that was connected to the halogen, and that's not the case here. So clearly a rearrangement is occurring. So let's go through this mechanism so we can understand and see this rearrangement. So first thing I'm going to do is draw in my lone pairs on my bromine. We'll go for the, through the first step of the mechanism. That bromine will attack our aluminum species, which is a Lewis acid, generating a species that has a new carbon bromine, or sorry, excuse me, bromine aluminum bond. So let's draw that in here. Al still has three chlorines. The consequence of that is this bromine had three lone pairs, now it only has two, therefore that bromine has a plus, and now this, this aluminum species got a new set of electrons from that bond, so that has a minus. Now this bromine is a really good leaving group, this carbon-bromine bond is going to break. That'll lead us with this three carbon chain here and our bromine aluminum species here. That aluminum still has a Cl minus, and that aluminum is really in equilibrium with the neutral species plus Cl minus, and we'll use that Cl minus later. But I want to go back to the important part here, my alkyl halide. Let's draw in our hydrogens here. So that species has two hydrogens. The middle carbon has two hydrogens. And let's just label these. We call this carbon A, carbon B, and carbon C. So I have carbon A, carbon B, and carbon C. So if we draw in our hydrogens on carbon A, there are now only two hydrogens. So this is a carbocation here and carbon B has two hydrogens. Of course, I haven't drawn the hydrogens on carbon C. There's three hydrogens on carbon C. But what I want to um, note here is this is a primary carbocation. That is an unstable species. So what can happen is this carbon-hydrogen bond can break. We can undergo a rearrangement here, and that's really the key step to this reaction. So when we do that, we now have three hydrogens over here on carbon A. Carbon B now only has one hydrogen, and therefore carbon B has a positive charge. That is my secondary carbocation. So we've undergone this rearrangement, so we went from a primary carbocation to a secondary carbocation because that carbocation is much more stable. Now there's no other rearrangements that can occur. This is the most stable carbocation we can form. And what we've seen is now this is going to be our electrophilic species here, and that is what the ring is going to attack. So my double bond will come down, attack carbon B. This is an attack step. There's the original hydrogen that was on that carbon. I've now added my carbon chain, but note I've formed my new bond to carbon B now. So there's carbon B, carbon A, and carbon C. Let's draw in the rest of the double bonds. There's a double bond here, a double bond there, and then we have a positive charge here. Of course, the original species was aromatic. This intermediate is not aromatic, so it's pretty high in energy. But the fact that we can draw a couple of resonance structures helps stabilize that. 
So let's draw in those resonance structures. We can move our double bond here, which puts our positive charge there. So there's our first resonance structure. Or we can move that double bond over there to draw our next resonance structure. Again, we still have that H, that isopropyl group. I now have a double bond here, double bond there, and then a positive charge there. So these are the two other resonance structures you can draw that help stabilize that intermediate. So going back using this chlorine here, I'm going to draw in my Cl minus. as a full octet, and we can now take these electrons to form a new bond from H to Cl. The carbon-hydrogen breaks, reforms my aromatic ring, and that gets me to my final product. This is a deprotonation step. So to review, the lone pair on the bromine attacks the aluminum to form this new bond here. The bromine has a plus, aluminum has a minus. I can break this carbon-bromine bond to form my primary carbocation. This is not the most stable carbocation we can form. A rearrangement occurs. This is really a key step to form my secondary carbocation. Your aromatic ring, a pi bond, will now attack that. Here's my new bond from the aromatic ring to carbon B because of the rearrangement. We can draw two resonance structures here. Here's a plus, move the electrons there, double bond and a plus there, move the electrons there, double bond and a plus there. To finish the mechanism, the chlorine will deprotonate that hydrogen, break the carbon-hydrogen bond to reform this pi bond here, and that gets me my final product.